Capacitors in series and parallel. In the figure, the capacitors are in series and fully charged. What is meant by the term equivalent capacitance? Equivalent capacitance is the capacitance of the single, often imaginary, capacitor that would have the same effect as a combination of two or more others. The equivalent capacitance would be the capacitance that we would need if we, for example, in this upper right picture, if we took both of these out, took both of them out, and we just put one there, such that the battery didn't know that we had done anything. Whatever the capacitance of that one capacitor is, that's the equivalent capacitance. You might remember that capacitance in general is Q over V. One handy equation, which we're going to run into in this lesson, is that the equivalent capacitance is the total charge that moves in the circuit or the total charge that is stored divided by the voltage of the battery. That one is going to come into play. Point number two, capacitors in series have the same charge. So that's one thing you need to know. Capacitors in series have the same amount of charge. Each of them store the same amount of charge as each of the others. So let's write a Kirchhoff's loop equation for this circuit right here and then use that to derive the equation for the equivalent capacitance for capacitors in series. We're going to start here at point A, and we're going to go, let's say, clockwise around the circuit, and let's write a Kirchhoff's loop equation. We're going through the battery from negative to positive terminal, so that's going to be plus V. Then we're going to hit this capacitor, and we're going to be traveling. This plate will be positively charged. This one will be negatively charged. So we're traveling in the direction of its electric field. So we need to go minus Q over C. Well, Q1 over C1. We continue around. Now we run into capacitor number two. And that will also be in the direction of the electric field. So we write here Q2 over C2. And now we're back to our starting point, which is point A, so we write equal to zero. So there's our loop equation. Well, we just said here that the voltage of the battery, let me sneak up to the top of the page here. Oop, look at that. There's an equation right there at the top of the page for the voltage from the battery. If we rearrange that, you see is equal to the total amount of charge divided by the equivalent capacitance. So I'm going to change this right here, because this is the voltage of the battery, to be the total amount of charge over the equivalent capacitance. But for capacitors in series, the total amount of charge is the same for each capacitor. So instead of just of this being Q total, I could just call it Q. And then this one would be Q. And this one would be Q. And if all of these have Q in them, then I can divide through by Q, and the Q ends up canceling. Which means, if we solve this, we can get an equation that looks like this. 1 over the equivalent capacitance is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. And if you had more capacitors in series, you would just continue that trend. We're going to do one example of that right now. So here we have a circuit with three capacitors, and they are in series. Series means one right after the other. The equivalent capacitance would be what capacitance should we put in there if we tore all three of these out and just put one there, such that the battery didn't know that anything had happened. The equivalent capacitance in this case is going to be 1 over 24 microfarads plus 1 over 13 plus 1 over... 17. This is one of those comparatively rare examples where we actually would need a calculator for this. When you type this into your calculator, this is the number you get, something like 0 0.17741. Now, that isn't the equivalent capacitance. That's 1 over the equivalent capacitance. So now you need to take the reciprocal of this thing. 
the equivalent capacitance that I got turns out to be about 5.64. And the good news is that whatever the unit is for the capacitors that you've got, you can just write your equivalent capacitance in that same unit. So you don't have to convert into microfarads right from the beginning. You can just include it there at the end. So if you have capacitors in series, that's how you deal with them. What about capacitors in parallel? Well, capacitors in parallel have the same voltage. We're going to talk about this later, but whenever you're doing circuits, any portion of a circuit that is boxed in by circuit elements is going to have the same electric pressure. The voltage at every point along there is the same value. Similarly, the voltage at all of these points is the same value. What you see there is that the difference in voltage is going to be the same for each of those circuit elements. What does that mean? One more time, capacitance is Q over V. The total amount of charge that is moved now by the battery is equal to Q1 plus Q2. See, now the charge isn't the same for each capacitor. The voltage is the same, but the charge isn't. And we said earlier that the equivalent capacitance could be written as the charge that the battery moves, the total charge, divided by the voltage of the battery. So if we solve this equation here that I'm putting a little bubble around, if we solve that for Q, you see you get C times V. The total charge is the equivalent capacitance times the voltage of the battery, and that's equal to C1V1 plus C2V2. But look what's at the top of the screen. The voltage is the same. So instead of calling this voltage of the battery, I'm just going to call it V. Instead of calling this V1, I'm just going to call it V. Instead of calling that V2, I'm just calling it V. Then I can divide through by V because I got a V in every term. So if your capacitors are in parallel, you use what I call the add them up equation. When your capacitors are in series at the top of the screen, you use what I call the one over equation. We're going to practice that in the next video.